Welcome to Inspirational Journeys, everyone. My name is Ann Harrison, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with Emily Crookston, the Pocket PhD. Welcome to the show, Emily. Thanks. I'm so glad to be here, Ann. Thank you so much for being here. I'm glad to have you. So why don't you start by introducing yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Emily Crookston. Like you said, I am the owner and decider of all things at the Pocket PhD. Uh, I like to call myself the ghostwriter for Rebels, Renegades, and Mavericks. Um, so I work with a lot of experts, a lot of professionals who basically have uh, not enough time to write. <laughs> and so I help them write business books, mainly, uh, as well as helping with some LinkedIn content um, and, yeah, and editing books as well. Oh, okay. So let me, I always ask my guests, and I know you're a ghostwriter, maybe not an author, but I'm because you're a writer, I still want to ask this question. What inspired you to become a writer? Yeah, it's a great question. A lot of, you know, a lot of writers and authors say, oh, I've been writing since I was 12. Um, <laughs> that's not really the case for me. I, I was never a, a really big fan of creative writing or writing poetry or anything like that. Um, but I went to graduate school in philosophy and philosophy is a really particular type of writing. I would say it's almost technical. Uh, it's very nuts and bolts. Like, here's my argument. Here are the objections. Here are my responses to the objections. Uh, so it's a very straightforward way of writing. But I found that it translates really well into writing lighter things like businessy type things. You know, you have an opinion, you have an angle, and then you have your bullet points. And that makes a really nice blog. So, you know, I kind of, I think a lot, this is true of a lot of ghostwriters. I kind of fell into ghostwriting um, when I was ready to leave academia and looking for something else to do. Um, but I found that my skill in writing in that really straightforward kind of manner translates really well um, to writing for my clients. So how did you become a ghostwriter? Was there anything that special that you had to do? I've done some ghostwriting myself, but it's been a while. But yeah. tell people, you know, if there's writers out there looking for ghostwriting opportunities, what do they need to do? Yeah, that's a great question. So for me, it was, I didn't know what I wanted to do and someone was looking for marketing help. And so I started writing her blog. She owns a web development company in Washington, DC. Um, so she had clients who needed blog posts as well. Um, this was 2015, 16. Um, so I would say maybe blogging was even a bigger thing at that time than it is now. Um, but clients, she had clients who needed website content, essentially. And so at first I thought, oh, well, maybe I could write copy. Maybe I could be a copywriter and write website content. Um, but I really don't love short stuff. I don't, I'm not that good at short, tight copy. I'm really good at long form types of things. And so, you know, I just kind of found my way to clients through her and through her clients, you know, through referrals. And I think that that's a really good way to start ghostwriting. I mean, literally when I started writing books, for example, it was a couple of years into my business. All I said was, look, I can write books and <laughs> started talking about it. And then people started finding me that way. Um, and so I think you know, it's really easy to start a ghostwriting business uh, on a referral basis. In fact, I still get most of my clients through referral. Oh, nice. OK, so and your assistant, I guess he, he he's your assistant or publicist. But anyway, Amir, he uh, gave me some some bullet points and. I found them kind of interesting. So the first question is, what are your tips for new writers who, who people who want to write a book, but don't feel like they have the time? Yeah, that's always a challenging one. That's one of the biggest questions I get from authors who want to write their own stuff and they're looking for some, you know, a content strategy, um, those kinds of questions. I think, you know, I don't like to put it in terms of you don't have the time because I think you make time for whatever you want to prioritize. Um, so I think when it comes to writing, the biggest thing you can do is set yourself a word count goal per day, per week, whatever works for you, and then schedule that time on your calendar and make sure you're getting it done. Make sure you're sitting down to do the writing. And I think you can get stuck um, thinking that, oh, this has to be perfect, you're, you know, or, oh, I don't know what to say. But if you can just get over that bit of, you know, perfectionism or imposter syndrome or whatever it is, 
and just start writing, the words will start flowing pretty easily. You, you know, just tell your story. It doesn't have to be fancy. You, you remember that the first draft should be messy. It's okay for it to be messy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the more words you have, the easier it will be to edit later. You know? Oh yeah. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Sometimes not. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Although I will say, from my own experience, this year I've been trying to write a book for myself, actually. Um, and I stopped after a few weeks in the, when I first started because I just couldn't find the big structure, the outline. I couldn't figure out, you know, what the book was was really about. Um, and so I picked it back up later where I was just like, okay, just write, just write about whatever, you know, <laughs> just, just put some words down. Um, and I actually ended up finding my way to more of a, you know, topic that makes sense in my head as a bigger idea that I can expand on. So I think it can work if you allow the process to unfold that way. Oh, okay. So, and, and there's a, there's a curious question here. Why is it that some books make the bestsellers list and the, the better ones don't? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think the short answer is marketing and promotion plays a huge role in what books get on the bestseller list. Um, I was listening recently to an interview with Tim Ferriss. Um, the book is the four hour work week from it was it's a book written in 2007 or 2008 mm -hmm. um, older book. You might know Tim Ferriss, you might love him, you might hate him. <laughs> There's a lot of he, he, people form strong opinions about him and his book, but you have to respect the way he managed to get that book on the bestseller list. And he did it pretty much all through his own marketing efforts. Um, the book was on a bestseller list, I think for two years in a row or four years in a row. It sold 2 million copies, something like that. Um, and he talks about how he got that book out there. And basically he went to the influencers in his industry, which is basically work stuff, um, you know, and, and, and he just, he just put that book in front of those people and, and just kept doing that over and over. And eventually they wrote about the book and that's really what rocketed him onto the bestseller list. Um, I think, whether you go with a traditional publisher or whether you do self-publishing, you have to remember that you're going to do a lot of the marketing yourself as an right. author. Right. Um, and so having a good marketing plan, interviewing authors, you know, who've been successful about, about what they did and how they did it, uh, you know, good ways to figure out what that marketing plan should look like. Oh, okay. So I was about, I was going to ask you, uh, have there been any self-published authors that um, have been on the New York Times bestseller list or is that only traditional authors? Yeah, that's a great question. I don't know the answer to that, actually. I mean, you know, oh, wow. self-publishing, <laughs> self yeah, that's a good, really good question. Uh, with self-publishing, you know, a lot of my authors, for example, have the goal of being bestsellers on Amazon, and that's very doable as a self. Oh yeah, author, obviously. yeah. Um, and plus, you know, Amazon has parts. like <laughs> yeah, good, yeah. And I mean, Amazon has a million lists too, so it's not hard really to be a bestseller on Amazon, or it's certainly easier to be a bestseller on Amazon than on the New York Times bestseller list. or the USA but, Today, yeah. Yeah, or, or USA Today. Yeah, so I do know that um, New York Times bestsellers have to sell more than 25,000 copies. And it's pretty tough to do that as a self-published author. I won't say that it has never happened. I'm sure that there are cases we could find um, where people have sold books that way. Um, but yeah, I think in most cases, you're going you're gonna to be working with a traditional publisher to get on that list. Ah, okay. So another thing that, that caught my interest okay so back to the writing tips themselves what are some of the mistakes you've seen from writers and what are uh, how can you prevent some of the mist these mistakes yeah I think the biggest mistake I see authors making is in my world which is business books is authors not thinking through the business case for their book um, so I talk to a lot of uh, wannabe authors and would-be authors and, you know, they've got an idea. It's a great idea in a lot of cases, a really good idea. It's probably related to something in their life, right? They've got some experience around the thing, but they may not have thought through whether that 
idea actually relates to the, their business, right? How is this going to be a, a way of attracting prospects? How is this going to be a way of getting uh, attention around my brand? You know, how does this book really tell my brand story as opposed to my personal story. Um, so I always encourage authors to think in those terms if they're writing a business book and if their goal with the business book is to make money. <laughs> um, because most authors that I talk to, it's also true that they're not going to make their money back um, on book sales alone. Um, they're going to make their money uh, doing speaking gigs and using the book as a as a takeaway or a giveaway at as a business card pretty gigs. much yeah as a business card exactly um or more than that it might tie in with a an online course they're selling right this could be kind of the manual of the course um that sort of thing but, oh. but you definitely yeah you definitely want to think about the business case that's one of the big questions i always ask clients you know what's what's the business case for the book because to be honest writing a book is a lot of work and it takes a lot of time and if you're not clear about how you're going to use that to build your business then it may not be the right time it may not be worth your time to write that book right now right um i'm doing a craft book for fiction and yeah. I am thinking about, I mean, I haven't gotten the book ready yet, but once I do get it ready, I'm thinking about doing an online course. I hear a lot of, of people say, well, create your online courses, even if you write fiction. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it, it, you know, if you have the, a great idea and it's unique, you know, there's no reason it couldn't be a course and a book. Um, I helped someone write a parenting book in the spring. And that's exactly what she did. She's created a course. She's doing a lot of PR around it. And, you know, all of that is kind of building uh, up to buying the book as well. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Her, yeah. I mean, Dale Roberts was talking about it in a, in a conference that I, on a, a uh, yeah. online conference. Yeah. You know, you, you, have you watched Dale Roberts on YouTube? I have. Yeah. Yeah. It's great stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so I know this is not about writing, but I, I saw it. I hadn't, I didn't really look into it as much, but tell me about the LinkedIn roadmap. Oh, cool. Yeah. So yeah, these are new services, newer services for me this year. I kind of decided that in addition to ghostwriting, I wanted to have something that would be sort of more of a monthly uh, package that I could sell to clients, um, people who maybe have a big idea that they need to want to, they want to focus more on the distribution side of, of the content. Um, and so I think LinkedIn is a really good place for authors. It's a great place for entrepreneurs, uh, people in business to reach a bigger audience. And since the pandemic started, I've really gotten into using LinkedIn a lot more regularly on a daily basis. And so I've learned some stuff that I want to pass down <laughs> to clients. Uh, so the LinkedIn roadmap is basically a high level audit of your LinkedIn profile, where I'll look at your everything about your profile, your photo, your, your cover banner uh, image, as well as your headlines and your about section. And I'll give you basically actionable steps to improving that profile based on your goals. Um, and so I have a little questionnaire. Uh, I look at the profile, I come up with some recommendations, and then we would meet one on one and talk through those things. And I would give, you know, my best tips for figuring out how to use LinkedIn. Oh, cool. Yeah, I listened to the your interview on what works. And oh, yeah. you yeah, and you were talking about interviews that you do on LinkedIn. Tell me who are the I mean, what type of interviews do you what do you do? Yeah, and I'm always looking for new interviewees, anybody who'd like to be interviewed. So uh, it's called Own Your Expertise. And so I interview experts and uh, we talk for, you know, 20, 30 minutes um, on Zoom or on LinkedIn Live. And yeah, we just we chat about your journey to being becoming the expert that you are. Um, and it's really fun. If, if I could, you know, get paid to interview people all day long, that's what I would do. Oh, I know, um, me too. Um, yeah, right? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, it's so much fun. It's great to get to know people and, and yeah. hear about their journeys. I learn so much. Um, yeah, so I love it. You kind of do the same thing I do on the podcast, but you do it for LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I don't call it a podcast. I call it a video series, but it's basically a podcast. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much. <laughs> right. <laughs> Very cool. Well, do you have any last minute advice you would like to share before we close? Yeah, I mean, to talk to writers, you know, if if you're the kind of person who 
likes to help other people out. I think ghostwriting is not a bad way to go. And I'm always happy to talk to aspiring ghostwriters about, you know, how I've made things work um, for myself. And I would say, you know, it, it's challenging to think of a ghostwriter for fiction. I know that there are ghostwriters out there who do fiction. Um, but for me, because it's business related, because it's almost like writing long, long, long blogs, <laughs> uh, it doesn't feel like I am giving away all my creativity, for example, because um, I know that that can be a barrier when authors think about ghostwriting as, a, as work. Um, but I think it can be a really nice uh, career to pair with being an author um, because you can write your own stuff when you have the time, but you can also be working on other people's stuff, um, you know, on a contract basis. And so I think it's a really nice uh, way to make being an author work as a career, actually. Um, so that would be my advice about aspiring ghostwriting. Uh, when it comes to your own writing, you know, the biggest piece of advice I can, I can give you is just make sure you're getting in that chair and putting some words on the page every day. Um, they add up over time. They add up more quickly than you think. Um, and if you miss one day, make sure you don't miss a second day. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's my biggest piece of advice for getting the writing done. Yeah, um, personally, I, um, I've i ghost written fiction ebooks for a company, but they wanted them so fast, it was hard to. Yes. Out. Yeah, the speed is an issue for sure. You know, the faster you could write, the easier it is to be a ghostwriter. Yeah, um, but sure. I don't like. I don't like writing so fast that, and mm -hmm. I don't, that I don't have time to edit. That's my thing. Understand. I'm, I'm yeah. very particular. Maybe I wouldn't be the best ghostwriter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I could totally understand that. I mean, every project is different almost, you know, like some are, yeah. some blog posts come really quickly and some take oh, me yeah, I can do five hours. Books. <laughs> I don't like doing them in like, th like a week when I, when it would normally realistically take me two or three just to get it you know, get it yes. fine tuned and stuff. Right. I don't want to send tough. garbage to anybody. No, no, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I totally get that. So yeah, there are, there are definitely projects that I, I like to take on and projects that I don't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, I'm sure. I, I like the freedom to pick and choose for sure. Yeah. yeah. So where can people find you online? Yeah, you can find me on my website, which is thepocketphd.com. You can, of course, find me on LinkedIn, Emily Crookston. And then on Twitter, it's E.M. Crookston. Okay, and I see you, and I noticed you've got a Facebook page for your The Pocket PhD, too. Uh, yes, I do have a Facebook page as well. I think um, I don't spend as much time on Facebook these days um, as I once was with my you business. You sound yeah. like me. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't only go to my Facebook if I've got something to post or I'm looking at notifications. Yes, yes me too. Me too. Yeah. Yes. So that's Twitter. not the best place, but yeah, yeah I'm yeah. on a Twitter and Discord person myself. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. But yeah. okay, so um are I know you're a ghostwriter, but do you author books on your own? Yes, I am working on a book right now for myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. What kind of what what kind of yeah, this one is going to be about, it's based on the Own Your Expertise interviews. Um, it's, it's my take on, you know, owning your expertise. I gave a talk as well um, last, uh, well, two springs ago now almost, um, uh, about how to own your expertise. And so the book is going to be an expansion of, of those thoughts. Okay. All right. Well, um, thank you so much for being on the show, everybody. We challenge you to go out there and read to get inspired, write something inspiring and create and, and share your creation with the world. For when you've touched one life, you've touched thousands. Thanks for joining us on Inspirational Journeys. And remember, your story matters. Have a blessed day, everybody.